want to thank God for your books and the courses, the kingdom courses that I would have taken, even though I would have taken them all at one time. But I, it's, it's as though your books coupled with my prayers has ushered me into a new dimension of kingdom authority. And um, the testimony that I'm really going to share is a testimony of God's um, healing power being manifested in my life. Um, I don't ever recall having experience in such a miracle um, 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 since I became a citizen of the kingdom, but um, your books has really helped me to grow in intimacy with God and to walk in that new dimension of kingdom authority. So what was happening, one day I, I woke up and I realized that there was a swelling on my foot. Mm. It was an unusual swelling on my foot. And I looked at it and I felt it. And when I pressed on a certain point on the swelling, it was extremely painful. Normally I won't bother if there's a swelling on my skin because you know sometimes things would bite you and it's natural for your, your skin to swell sometimes and it would just it was it would just go down as natural or as normal. But for some reason it was swollen. And it was not just swollen, but it was painful. So the fact that it was painful, I started thinking, okay, this is an indication that something is wrong. Probably there's some infection, but I couldn't recall um, any in, uh, encountering any injury. I couldn't recall knocking my foot. I couldn't recall something biting me. I don't know what it was, but I began to panic inside a bit because of the fact that it was extreme. It was extremely painful when I pressed on it. And I started thinking, Lord, I may have to go to the doctor and all that stuff. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me clearly and told me that you have the authority to speak to that thing. Mm. And it was so clear to me. I knew it was the Holy Spirit. And I looked at it and I spoke to it. I said, I said, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I said, this temple is set aside for kingdom purposes. I said, you have no part here, so mm. take your leave. And I spoke that word and I forgot about it. And two days after I checked for it, it was still there. I pressed on it. It was still painful, but less painful. And then about three days after I checked for it again and it was not there. It was gone. The swelling went down. There was no pain. It was gone. And, you know, God really just used that experience to help build my faith because um, though I knew that God was a healer, I never experienced his healing in such a direct way. Mm -hmm. And so that really encouraged me. And I just really wanted to share, just share that experience that I, I had. That's why I said that it's, it's as though that it's as though your books, reading those books and and praying and, and really pursuing int intimacy with God has led me into a new dimension of kingdom authority, a dimension that I never walked in before. And so I really thank God. I really thank God for the revelation that I would have received through your books. And I say to God be the glory. May his kingdom come and his will continue to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you. And thank you, Jesus. God is good. Yes, there are different dimensions and different realms in the kingdom, in the spirit, in God's word that you can live on. And the more you hunger, the more you learn, the more you pursue it, you know, these places opens up that you never experienced before. And there's no end to it. But I encourage you never get satisfied never get settled what you have experiencing now with God. There's more, <laughs> there's more out there. You know, the moment you get settled, religious spirit creeps in. So I tell people who are working with me or anywhere I go, we are in constant innovation. We have to keep moving with God in what he is doing. So never get settled anywhere in your life spiritually you'd always keep there's always more to know 
and God is always speaking. Holy Spirit is always speaking, whether through his books or his word, through somebody else, through directly through the Spirit. He is always speaking. So thank you, Simone, for that testimony and thank God for what he's doing in your life. Other Simone, quickly, please, and then Martin. Um, I just wanted to clarify something so it's out of the way. Okay. Um, uh, sometimes I skipped just through the messages in the WhatsApp group uh, and I just read uh, a comment from Laurie that she answered Delta that uh, that there's, there's a strong something strong something and then uh, anxiety, depression and so and I just overread it. Yeah, okay, as it was my and I thought, oh, uh, that she overcame a stronghold of suicide, anxiety, depression, and so on. And because I had that background, and it was very interesting for me because Laurie for me is very stable. So I thought, wow, yeah, how did she get out of that? So this was for me then uh, very interesting to hear that testimony. And she shared last week. And um, and then I asked her, yeah, well, what about your testimony? And uh, it had nothing to do with Laurie. So I just wanted to clarify it was my mistake. I read something which wasn't there. So it, uh, I just overread something. And that's it. Okay. okay. So I'm sorry if I placed it, uh, if anybody got something wrong about her or her testimony. Okay. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Martin, my brother. Ah, Was good. Beard or something there? I see some smoke yes. or something. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Something white. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm, I'm maturing. I'm maturing. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, everyone. Um, kingdom greetings to all. Um, first, let me, let me just, I, I can't, I can't, but not but thanking everyone who have certainly come on as it regards to the seminar last week that we had. Boy, people are still talking about it and people are asking us when is the next one and all sort of excitement. But I really, yes, I really want to genuinely thank all of the saints, all of the Ecclesia family that has joined, that has requested the, the, the meeting and, and really just lend us your support and your prayers. Um, we believe that God has certainly taken it to another notch and um, we're just we're just really um, sinking ourselves in him and, and really asking him to, to continue to show us the way. I must tell you, before this journey began, we didn't have no 10 point plan workout where we just heard, boy, this is what I lay on your heart. And um, we, we started and it is evolving before our eyes. Peace, pieces are being added as we speak and really just wanna say thank you guys. Um, wanna just to add also because the excitement is heightening after the meeting on Sunday um did all the preliminaries and whatever and then finish went to bed woke up with my with a stinging headache and and fever literally shaking and um so for the whole of monday i was in bed and by monday evening well thank god for my dear wife she started nursing me and by late monday early tuesday um, which I remained in bed for the whole of the day. She pretty much started getting something. By Wednesday, I it switched. I started taking care of her. <laughs> and Wednesday, she went and did a COVID test. Uh, Thursday, she got the response. She was positive. Um, um, and then Friday, I went and did mine with myself and our two boys. We did uh, ours and um, we got, actually this morning, the person called us and told us, uh, myself and my oldest son, Jordan, have the COVID. My, son, my last son, Nathan, who is the only one that is not vaccinated. Let me emphasize that. My wife is fully vaccinated. The three of us fully vaccinated. My wife has also gotten her booster shot. And um, so 
But long and short of it, we are well. God is with us and um, we're victorious. So again, just want to thank you guys for the prayers. And um, there's no stopping. There's no stopping. I said to Dr. Morgan that I have the scars now to show for it. So bless God. So just wanted to share that a bit with you all. Thank you guys for the prayers. And um, we, you guys will hear a bit more. So that's it for me. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. That was excellent. Last week, the family, kingdom family meeting, I think many of you were there and many that was outside of Ecclesia were there. And I think what I thank God for what God is doing through the kingdom family tribe. You know, we have many tribes now, kingdom agriculture tribe, which is making great progress. We have kingdom healthcare tribe, kingdom educational tribe. We have kingdom business tribe. Um, if I just tell you, sit here and tell you for an hour about all that God is doing, it won't be enough. But I just thank him for what he's doing. Is Santiago here, actually, from Philippines? We were able to send him the money for him to buy all the equipment. Not all, most of it or some of it. I want to share what he bought. So because we are launching the Kingdom School in the Philippines, thank you everyone who donated. You know, we were needed 2,800, we got 2,400. So I sent 2,400, I don't take any fees or anything. I cover those fees, the, the online platform charge when you send the money, I send it all there. So he got it, he bought the equipment and everything. So God is doing, Santi, are you here? Can you hear me? I know he's up in the mountain somewhere, no electricity there. <laughs> Hello, Papa. Oh, there he is, he's here. Good morning. Good morning. Tell us what's happening in the Philippines, Santi. Uh, we are, I and my wife are so very happy with the blessings, financial blessings from uh, our Ecclesia family uh, uh, through you, Pastor Abraham Jan. We have uh, uh, both uh, purchased some uh, gadgets and uh, we are uh, so happy and we are now uh, uh, making translation the the powerpoints and the uh, I'm listening to uh, those six uh, lessons in uh, uh, discovering the lost kingdom and I'm translating it to into Tagalog pastor into the Filipino uh, dialect. So we are so very happy and. The pastors here are so excited and they are waiting for the school to to open, to start. And uh, uh, we thank you, uh, Ecclesia family, for being a great blessing to uh, the uh, Kingdom School Philippines. What else do you need? Do you, do you have everything you need to launch the school? Uh, uh, the, the budget, the budget uh, is short, Pastor, so we are still praying for God for the, uh, uh, we have purchased uh, uh, the, uh, the laptop and the desk computer and we are, uh, we are now praying for uh, God to provide for the loudspeaker and the mic. They were not included in purchasing, Pastor, for the budget is short. So you need a loudspeaker, you need a speaker, you need a sound system. Yes, Pastor, we are still uh, uh, believing that God will provide. How much How much does it cost for the sound system? I... I will check the, the I will check the list, Pastor. I live I I left it in 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 home. I'm now on the mountain. I okay. forgot the the price. <laughs> okay, let us know. Let me know. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Ecclesia family. I'm going to believe with you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your generous heart to touch the nations. One of the things I cried when I was young, even. When I was in my 30s, Lord, make me a blessing to the nations of the world. And God is doing it. And I'm just grateful. So here's the one verse that I'm going to give you. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Third John 
And I know I read this two weeks ago, but Holy Spirit is highlighting this verse because many of us, including myself, you know, we grew up, but our soul part of our life got stuck somewhere. It didn't grow with our physical body because of the things that happened to us, which is called emotional arrest or arrested development. You could be 50 years old in your physical body, but 11 years old in your soul life, because something that happened to you, whether it is 11 years, five years, or at your conception when you're in your mother's womb, things have happened to you that hindered the development and the growth of your soul. And it happened to me. I was an adult in my physical body, but emotionally, I was a child inside. I couldn't handle any criticism. I couldn't handle any negative things that faced or I faced in my life. I was so insecure, felt so rejected, but I was an adult. When people looked at me, they thought, oh yeah, Abraham, look at that. He's six foot tall. He's not bad looking. I don't want to say handsome. <laughs> he's preaching, you know, he's traveling across the globe. But inside I was a child, like Solomon said, it happened to Solomon. It happened to many people in the Bible. Jeremiah, like last week I said in the kingdom family meeting, when God came to him and said, I have ordained to you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah said, Lord, I cannot speak because I'm a child. What happened to Jeremiah while he was growing up? What happened to Abraham John while he was growing up? Emotional abuse, traumas that you go through in life. Arrest your emotional development. Your soul won't grow with the body. You got, your soul gets stuck somewhere. And you have to unravel it. You have to revisit those incidents that happened to you. So that you will reach a wholeness in your emotional life. Otherwise, it will sabotage your assignment. I'm telling you, it will sabotage your relationships. It will sabotage your health and your finances. That's why God said in 3 John chapter 1, verse 3, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Everybody say, just as your soul prospers. God's word, God wants our soul to prosper and be in health, emotional health, physical health, financial health, because soul is the part that connect between spirit and our natural world or our body. So our soul is not healed. The communication between spirit and body get hindered or twisted. You won't get the right perspective. Your decisions will be squeed. You will make unhealthy choices in your life. Unhealthy decisions. Because the soul is not healed yet. And we all made unhealthy choices. I am the first one. I made tremendous, heavy, costly, unhealthy decision in my life because my soul was not healed. And I don't want that to happen to any of you. And I am open. I am transparent. I don't have nothing to hide. I don't do it for an offering <laughs> to impress people. I do it to help people. I do this to help people because I want people to experience real freedom and breakthrough in their life. Somebody told us today, I think my brother Rex said, religion makes us pretend. We are good. We are wonderful. One of the messages in the equation group said, religion makes us pretend. We are holy. We are righteous. We are okay. We smile in church. We smile on Sunday morning. Then, then Monday morning, we become like a tortoise. We pull our head inside our shell, and then we hide from the world. We don't need to hide from the world. 
if we can find the healing that we need in our soul, we can face life. We can face situations, circumstances with the boldness like a lion. That's what I do now. When fear comes, I run toward that fear. When giant comes, I run toward that giant. I don't hide in a cave, in a shell, whatever that may be. I don't care about people's opinion anymore. I'm tired of hiding behind the shell, thinking what other people are thinking about me. It's too late. Somebody say amen. Tell it's too late. <laughs> amen. <laughs> it's too late to hide behind the shell like a turtle. You are not a turtle. You are a child of the living God. Son of the living God. And the Bible says amen. the righteous are bold like a lion. Amen and amen. So please. Amen. Dig those dead bones that has been holding your soul back in a cave. David cried out, Lord, set, set my soul free from the, from the dungeon. That's what he said. Bring my soul out of dungeon. David cried out. That's what he said again in Psalm 23. He restores my soul. God cares about your soul. He wants to restore you and make you whole. So it won't sabotage your destiny, your assignment. It doesn't happen by one prayer, somebody laying hands on you. It's a process. Layer by layer by layer by layer, this thing has to come. It's like peeling an onion. And when you get there, there's nothing there. It was a pretend. It was a fear that got in somewhere there. You had to, you had to peel those off, peel those off, peel those off, one by one. The more you share, the more you open it up. The more you be honest with yourself and others, no pretense, no religion, none of those things. Kingdom, son, sonship, and daughtership in, in the kingdom as a father, oh, heavenly good. father, because he knows. So I encourage you that your soul may prosper as, as, you, as you remain in good health and prosper in every other area of your life. So let's pray now. We are going to pray for Ukraine and Russia also. We want that war to end in Jesus' name. Whatever injustice has been done over the people who is suffering, it is the poor people that suffers. You know, the leaders, they are living in security, high secure places, but the poor people who are fleeing um, Ukraine. I was in Ukraine eight years ago. I went there twice. I was in Kiev twice to minister I love that country. I love that city. I was in Moscow uh, also. But we are going to pray and declare as an ecclesia of God, peace. They are in talks now between Russian government and the Ukrainian government. They are talking about negotiating what needs to be done. And we are going to declare that peace will manifest in Jesus' name. So are you ready? We have a great team of people waiting to share with us. Oh, my gosh, I can't wait. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing through the ecclesia across the globe, in all the countries, Father, all the nations. I thank you for healing those who are not feeling well physically, Martin and Jillian and anybody else here, Father, who's not feeling well. I declare complete health in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for restoring our soul. That's what you said, repent means it has to do with our mind. It has to do with our thinking, Father. Thank you for helping us to learn to think as Adam thought before the fall about himself, about God, about the earth, about, his, about the world that God has given to us. I thank you for restoring each one of our souls, that we won't be people who get offended so fast. Who will be, we won't be people who get so angry, reacting, or anything like that, Father. But until we reach a place, we, we treat each other with love and honor and respect. And anybody else, Father, I thank you for that complete healing in our hearts, in our soul. I thank you for healing me, Father. And if there is anything left, any residue left in me, any hold of fear in my heart. I thank you for delivering me from all the fears, fear of people, fear of failure, fear of 
others people opinion i thank you lord we pray as an ecclesia over ukraine and russia we declare peace over that war in jesus name i thank you father for negotiating i thank you for angels intervention in those negotiating table between the government russian government and ukrainian government i thank you for breakthrough cease fire we declare cease fire over ukraine in jesus name we cancel out the the spirit of war that wants to kill people destroy lives steal kill and destroy we cancel that we thank you for doing that thank you for everyone who is going to share today father be with their mouth their voice their heart their spirit as they will speak and bring out the kingdom that you deposited in their spirit man in eternity to manifest on the earth we call those gifts and callings out to manifest we thank you for doing that thank you for everyone who is part of different tribes what you're doing through different tribes thank you lord for all that you're doing we are so grateful we bless you thank you for the kingdom school in the philippines thank you for kingdom school in zambia thank you for kingdom school in nepal in india um, denmark here in the united states all across the globe father i thank you every city every town will have a kingdom school and ecclesia the governing body of god's kingdom on the earth we thank you for it i bless everyone in jesus Christ's holy name we pray amen and amen everyone say we declare cease fire over ukraine in jesus Christ's holy name that mighty angels be released right now to bring that cease fire into reality we thank you father for doing that in jesus name amen thank you thank you thank you we prayed you know before about china and taiwan that thing come down there before it was like every day in the news you know they are going to do this they are going to do that thank god for that peace over there so god is a good god he is waiting for our declaration so we have a great team of people sharing with us today the kingdom that god has deposited in us the first one is going to be my dear brother linton all the way from belize thank god for linton what god is doing through him even though he lives in belize he reaches his influence reaches across the globe south korea and beyond the people that he's teaching tutoring training and he's been a wonderful brother friend since we met thank you linton for all your friendship and partnership in the kingdom and thank god for what he's doing in you and through you i know it's only a beginning so let's welcome linton herrera from belize all right uh everyone can hear me yes okay all right morning everyone I, I, good day everyone it's a pleasure to actually be here um it's interesting listening to apostle should just not talking about the soul um i felt stirred in my heart to share a little scripture and a bit of what my process so far and the passion that's upon my heart presently uh the scripture i want to share actually come from jeremiah 18. it says the word which came to jeremiah from the lord saying arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and there he was making something at the wheel and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. I saw myself, that was a word that God gave me back in 2017. Um, letting me know that I am that clay in his hands. A little bit of history. I got saved by the age of 19 after being delivered from demon possession. Um, I've had, life had served many challenges from the time of conception up until the time I got saved. Um, I've tried committing suicide twice. Um, I used to live a lot on the streets among, when I say on the streets, I had a very good job, but um, because I never felt like I fit in in my own home environment, I spent a lot of times on the streets after working, hanging out with the drug addicts, the crack addicts. Though I never did drugs, I never smoked, I never did any of that stuff. I was just sitting there listening to their hearts and realizing that these men are hurting. 
and had a compassion for them. After I got, I got saved after 26 specialists gave up upon me in, in 1992 and said that there was no hope for this man, he's gonna die. Back then, um, I was a well-known figure because I used to choreograph a lot of dancing, which I still do as a believer. Wow. And into choreography. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was well known. So a lot of people came to my house to pray for me, all different religion you could think about. And it dawned upon me that not one of them had the authority to cast that devil out of me. My sister, who lived all the way in California, um, on the phone after fasting and praying, asked my mother to put the phone to my ear, and she was the one that cast that demonic spirit out of me. And that's how I got delivered. Even though you had the, every denomination you could think about gathered at my house to pray and not seeing result, God chose to use someone that was I was thinking outside the box. And I had questions on the inside of my heart. I wanted to know God, not religion. So I started on a quest. And um, the Lord started, I, I just wanted to know who God was, what he is like. I never wanted religion. I started pursuing him with all my heart. I wanted, I, I look at the scripture where John the beloved always, the, the scripture talk about John having his head upon Jesus' chest. I wanted to know the heartbeat of God. So I started, I started pursuing God intimately. I wasn't concerned about titles, which I still am not concerned about. I was more concerned about just being who God wanted me to be. And um, during that period, a lot of ministry activity took place, um, signs and wonders that blew my own mind away. I remember the first time I stood up to preach. Um, I said, Lord, you have to help me. And I felt like a fire clothed me. And every single person within the, the congregation um, was, was caught to the core as the Spirit of God began to minister to them. And I was, I was young. I never knew what I was doing. I never been to Bible school, anything like that. But while all these things were happening, um, there was still a flaw like that, that, that uh, clay in the hands of the potter. Um, there was a flaw. The circumstances of life had left a wound upon me from the time of conception up until then. But everyone would have seen, you know, like Apostle mentioned, this big six feet, four inches guy. They're ministering the word of God, traveling to different places, going to the highways and the byways, reaching out to the lost and the doctrines, the rejected, came into an all-white community in the North Spanish lookout with Mennonites, um, went through hell and high water, if you want to call it that way, all kind of names you could think about, I was called, every negative thing you could think about. But my heart for God was a key thing. And in the midst of it all, you know, I was involved in a lot of ministry activities, um, it came a point, I got married, I had children, I was a pastor for a local church, um, functioning within the community. But in 2017, everything came crashing down. And I hit rock bottom. And I remember the Lord told me specifically, do not look back to be reinstated back to where you were. I was in my, in my room, I was like, God, what are you saying? So this is time for me and you. And he, turned me to, he took me to that scripture. And even though from the outside looking in, everything seemed to be going crazy and people were just casting me aside because my life just came to a crashing halt. Uh, last basically everything. Um, I was reminded that he, he said, he said, Lyndon, read that scripture. And he said, the vessel that he made, that's you, Lyndon. While in the hands of the potter, you're still in my hands, was marred. But I will make you again into another vessel. I never understood what that meant at that time, but I can celebrate the fact that it was, a, it, God allowed that process because he wanted, dealt, he wanted to deal with the insecurities and the, the longing for a father figure, the longing for to, to be identified as a son. He wanted to deal with that issue in my life. And, um, even though on the outside, like I said, everything was crazy. I was having experience with God that went beyond the human mind in my environment. Everyone could not understand. I was, I, I was having visions of angels. I was being um, prophetically like 
like um, Delta would, I would be praying and declaring things over different things. And I'm telling God, what is going on? My life on the outside doesn't make sense, but I'm having these experiences with you. I'm experiencing you in a way I've never had before. There's a level of intimacy, a level, a, an understanding of your nature and character I have never experienced before, Father. What are you doing? And the more he began to make and shape me, the more the world I knew begin to fade away. And I realized I cannot connect to that anymore. Not so much that um, I just couldn't fit in that category anymore because of the new that he was building. And the scripture again, he made it, Lyndon Herrera, again, into another vessel. And I think that's the process I'm in right now that I'm being molded and shaped into a new vessel. And that's when I came across the Ecclesia um, through Martin, I believe. Um, invited me over once and I joined. And I heard things that made sense to me. I heard about the courts of heaven, but I was experiencing that. I heard about um, different things that was turning on inside of my heart that I could not place. It could not fit into the religious context that, that, that I know as knew as church. And it, to a certain extent, I was feeling like, God, am I hearing from you? Is there something wrong with me? Because these experiences that I'm having is blowing my mind away. I used to share them with people and they, they, don't, they never knew how to relate to me. Um, sometimes I was caught up in the spirit and seeing things. And in the midst of that moment, a voice, the voice that God gave me that I had killed because I was told that being poetic and being um, all this dancing is not manly. You know, that's not a man. A man's supposed to be out there in the field and sweating and all that stuff there. In the midst of that, the poetry start burning and I start seeing things. I start, I, I start hearing from God. It's like I was in a meadow. I could see heroes of the faith that went on before me and different ones telling me, so where I stop, you will continue. And I will write down things. I start writing all my experiences and I kept them as a journal. I start journaling my process with God, my track journey with God. That's how come I have about 300 poems. But I never stopped there. Um, then God started bringing me again people that were the outcasts, the rejects, the, the, those who have been misused or abused by religion and, and being cast aside. And the passion in my heart is to see these people restored as he's working upon me to make me into the vessel that he has ordained me to be. I have a heart for Belize. Prior to 2016, I run very hard. I served, like, like Apostle said, I would give my 150% into anything that I, I believe is of God to push things to advance in this nation. Not that I was told, but I felt that's what I wanted to do. But then even in this process, God started confronting me and asking me, why are you doing that? Are you doing it for recognition? Or are you partnering with me? Because whatever, however, whatever wrong mentalities I had prior to this crushing and this being remade and being remolded and being reshaped and retooled, I can't carry that into the new. So I started evaluating my life. I start, I start um, analyzing myself, understanding God, what are you after on the inside of me? What is it that you want? And the key thing I'm finding out is that he just wants me to know what it's like to be his son. That what I was seeking for in a lot of different aspects is what I, I need to find that in God. And I think that's what, how the Ecclesia had helped me so far with um, the boat books I read and going through to rediscovering the last kingdom. Right now I'm reading the um, God's, uh, the blueprint, you know, the God's original design. I'm reading that book there finding myself and finding my identity and finding out exactly who God has called me to be. But in the midst of all that, being able to, I could, I could identify with Delta because I could see things in the spirit that will blow people's mind away. And I find myself declaring things and speaking things and doing a whole bunch of stuff in the spirit. Because in the former, former ways, I was being used a lot in the prophetic to prophesy personal prophecy over people, but I always felt like there was more to God than that. More to God than just God is gonna bless you and thus say the Lord. I like God, this this is all the prophetic is, fortune telling. There has to be more to you than this. 
I don't want to just see someone be prophesied over. I want to see shift. I want to see transformation. I want to see impartation. I want to see change. I need to understand what it is that you want me to do. And so that's my process in a nutshell. And the intimacy between the potter and the clay is becoming more real to me that in the midst of that process of being shaped and remolded, I am discovering a certain aspect of the nature of God I never knew before. I'm discovering certain things about the kingdom of God I never knew existed before. I'm, be, I'm able to see life from a different perspective that um, right now I am teaching uh, tutoring South Koreans in South Korea. Um, I've been doing that for the past what, two years, going for three years. But it's, even though I am supposedly teaching English, is like the Lord is using that as an opportunity to speak confidence and to speak principles and to give people a sense of hope because these are the stuff I'm hearing back from my managers and from my students. That you don't only teach us, you're giving us life principles to live by. You're giving us, you're giving us a sense of hope that we never had. Some of them, they will stay up until midnight because 15 hours different between Belize and, and South Korea. They will stay up until midnight just for that phone call. These are not video, this is audio on the internet, 10 to 20 minutes, one-on-one -on -one individual. And it's there God start reshaping me and retooling me and telling me, listen to my voice, speak what I want you to speak. Yes, you're teaching them English, you're giving them new vocabulary, but make sure you say exactly what I want you to say. And so I offered up myself, I said, okay, God, whatever you wanna do, let me be an expression of your kingdom in the, that environment to bring impact to the lives of the people in South Korea. In the midst of that, uh, my passion is to see uh, the scripture that comes to my mind um, where the Bible talks about God will send his servant Elijah to restore the hearts of the father back to the children, the hearts of the children back to the father. That thing has been burning on inside of me the past few weeks. And I'm beginning to understand the heart. I have a passion or a compassion for people that others would have seemingly disregarded as though they're no ones, giving them a sense of hope. And uh, right now I am working with um, a few believers that have been messed up by religion. One family actually reached out to me yesterday uh, about two hours away from here. And I already introduced them. I said, listen, I want you to, I want you to know about the, 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 um, the Ecclesia. I want to sit down and have a conversation with you guys. I will drive down to the city if I need to. And we need to sit down and talk. Because potentially we could have another branch of the Ecclesia right there in that city. Because a young man that um, reached out to me, I have known him for 26 years, half of my life. He's like my close buddy. And um, I keep, I, I was feeding him different teachings. I sent him different books, different time, and he is hungry and thirsty for the things of God. My heart, I want to be exactly all that God wants me to be in seeing his kingdom advance in this nation and the nations of the earth. That is my heart. That is my desire. And um, I have a passion for that. Um, in the midst of that, I enjoy cooking. Um, I was running a restaurant for almost 18 years and doing different fancy meals. Uh, nothing that I could say I went to school to learn I just depend upon God to teach me to kind of stir up these things on the inside of me. The choreography is nothing that I went to school to learn either. It's based upon what I felt in my heart God wanted me to do. That's what I would teach people like Marta and different ones that were a part of the fellowship. Um, and I'm doing that with my children as well. My youngest son wanted to be here, but he couldn't because he wanted to sing a song for you guys. He's, um, he's all passionate. He's eight years old. Um, he keeps saying, Daddy, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost and I want to be baptized with fire. That's my eight-year-old son. But to close this all off, I wrote a poem that I believe um, is defining my process presently. This poem was written some time ago, but I realized is the is the this poem was was um the, is defining me right now. It says, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. The name of the poem is I Am. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye a pathway for the coming of the Lord. I am a flaming sword 
forged in the heat of a fiery furnace, shaped and molded by the power of his spirit and his word. I am God's man that will not be easily shaken, rooted in Christ in whom my life is hidden, a beloved son in the hands of my heavenly creator. I am in Christ as he is in the father. I am what I am by the grace of God, a weapon of war in the hands of Christ Jesus, my Lord, executing his will across the nations of the earth as he has ordained it to be before my birth. I am one who has taken the baton from the heroes of faith, moving to the finish and completion as I run the race, going where no man has ever gone before, perceiving traces in the wind, the new things of the Lord, becoming a mirror expression of Christ's divine nature and character. I am who I am ordained to be, completely submitted and yielded to my heavenly father. I am one that has been scorned, rejected, despised by men, but I've been shaped, processed, and refined by the Almighty King. I am bold as a lion with my face set like a flint, consumed with fulfilling divine purpose while carnal desires become extinct. A warrior for Christ, yet the Vedic in heart and nature, lives slow, solely by the breath and proceeding word of my Heavenly Father. I am one arising and shining for God's glory that has come. In the midst of deep darkness, I am filled with the spirit of wisdom. I am the bright and shining light for all men to see, the pathways to Zion of Christ and bringing God's glory. My life is not my own, it belongs to another, in whom I find true identity as I gaze into the eyes of my heavenly father. In Christ, I am a flaming arrow strung within his bow as I pierce through the darkness, demolishing oppression and sorrow. I am a weapon, a beloved son operating under divine command. That's the man I have become and the man that I am. Thank you. Thank you, Linton. Oh my goodness, you can cook, you can dance, you can write poems. Every woman's dream is right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Lord, how mercy. <laughs> Thank you, Linton. Oh my gosh. That's amazing what God, the gifts, you know, the package that God has put in you. It's very hard to, I know how much you will struggle to find the focus. Where to focus? Do I cook? Do I dance? Do I write poems? Do I teach? But this is what the Holy Spirit put in my heart. You know, the testimony that you have, you have gone through much. I know I don't know everything, but I can sense you haven't even shared 1% of all that you've been through. And there's a reason for all that, because God wants to turn it into a testimony to help other people to find their healing and their restoration. And that's what started now. God is bringing those people to, you know, the outcast like David had this 400 men. That nobody wanted, rejected in debt, in broken situations. They didn't know their purpose. They didn't know their assignment. But you are going to turn them into mighty warriors in the kingdom. So may the Lord grace you in Jesus' name with that anointing to find, to identify those people when they come to you, to find the solutions for them, that the Holy Spirit will just flow through you to identify those brokenness in those people, in their hearts, in their soul. And, oh my Lord, I feel something in my spirit, man. And I think that's what God wants to do. While you're doing all this teaching, you know, influencing people in South Korea and other places. So thank you so much for sharing with us what God has put in your heart. And it is still in a conception stage, actually. I know you want to do out there, flow into it and do all those things, but I see still it's a conception stage. And that baby will get delivered, will be birthed at the right time. So he's saying, just be patient. Just be a little more patient and it's coming. It's coming. God will do it because he's faithful and he's committed to you more than you feel or more than you understand, God is committed to you, to your life, Lyndon. So thank you. Anybody has any questions or comments? 
encouragement for Linton. I see Simone's. <clears throat> I do. It's Mama. Yes. Um, as I have looked, listened to you, Apostle, and um, know your heart, and um, as I have looked into the face of Linda, I, I truly want to simplify what I'm thinking. I want to, um, to use a strong term like indoctrinate him into the, the power of the position of teacher of the next generation, laterally of his own age and uh, generationally to the next generation. You said earlier that Lyndon has, jokingly, you said, what, what other women need? Like you're a choreographer, you, you can cook, can you write poetry? But all of that, you can teach the next generation. Mm. And I believe and I, when it comes from you, you are going to have so many looking to you for guidance. You're teaching um, language to a, a foreign nation. And all of that has been practiced for you to love the nations of the world. And you also mentioned, Lyndon, your heart for the displaced, like the disabled, the prisoners let out of prison, but have no hope, need to be rehabilitated and, and, and spoken into purpose into their lives. I think God has, you present to us as a, a big man, six feet four, with a heart full, turning the hearts of the fathers to the children, you said, and uh, the children disobedient to the wisdom of the just. You have been profoundly shaped and changed for such a time as this. So be sure to contact us about the upcoming education conversations. How do we shape the hearts? How do we uh, frame the minds of uh, the next generation? And laterally, those around us who themselves are seeking their place in the kingdom. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Mama. You should be part of the educational tribe. So I'm going to add you to that tribe because I know we have some meetings coming up very soon. Dr. Pat Mao yes. is putting together, he's, she's coordinating something big. March, uh, March 12th, right? 12th. Yes, March, March 12th. 12th. Mm -hmm. Hear more about it. So thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Uh, I see two other hands, Simone and Katie Cat. Hi, it's Katie. How are you? Good. Hey, Katie. Oh yes. My I saw your name a couple of weeks ago. I said, yeah. is that? I'm, uh, yes, Katie? I'm back. And I'm, I really missed you guys. And um, it's funny. Uh, thank you, Lyndon. As I was listening to your share, <clears throat> I'm back in school which is a good thing because I want to work with the um, young men that are getting released from all the CYA prisons, the young youth. So I'm going to be in San Francisco State starting a program. But Lyndon, what I got about you is when you were speaking, I just thought about David dancing before the Lord, and I could just see you just dancing before the Lord. And then when you talked about working with people that are the lost, kind of the lost people, um, I love the people that people have given up on. You know what I mean? The souls that everybody says they're no good, they'll never make it. And I really see through even your dancing and just um, the confidence that you have in the Lord. You know, I just really feel like it's, it's hard. I haven't talked online in the, the tribe in forever, but I really see you um, going forward and everyone you work with becoming mentors to other people you know it's like a ripple effect I believe you know and when we love someone because that's what it's about a lot of people haven't been loved their whole life it changes everything and I stopped the generational curses which someday maybe I could share you know in my family you know six years old helping my brothers divide up drugs things like that but I stopped that and my sons didn't have to do any of that stuff so I really just see you um, very successful in God's world you know in the kingdom world helping 
people realize that they're they should be loved you know they're children of god and so i just want to thank you for your share very much thank you katie appreciate it simone please yeah. i just have one word that i have so much the impression that god wants to say to you you're so precious in my sight and um it's so because we have a fatherless generation now yeah and i mean you went through that as well and uh, and the devil tries to um, uh, put his view about father onto god yeah into the into the young people and i think that god will use you and there's the brokenness and everything you went through yeah and um he will use you so much yeah for that uh, to restore yeah the picture of the father yeah what people have in in uh, in the young not only in the young people but who in everybody who's broken yeah and yearning for the father and yeah and i just want to bless you for it it was such a blessing now your testimony and i just want to say thank you and and god wants to be your father linton i know we i looked for a earthly father you know who could be my spiritual something but i couldn't find one until i found god as my father and he waited for that moment so i think that's what happening in your life also that he wants you to be that daddy in your life abba father that's what i call him daddy sometime you know he is our daddy he is our abba father he is god he is the creator he is consuming fire he is all that but he is our abba so that is the greatest that is one of the greatest discovery salvation kingdom and sonship in god's kingdom not leadership <laughs> sonship in the kingdom if you can get those three things and daughtership actually ladies you are included in it so so your salvation kingdom when you discover kingdom you will discover your assignment and then your identity in god's kingdom as a son as a daughter then enemy is not a problem for you he will flee from you you will be able to resist him like the bible says resist the devil he will flee from you but if your identity is not settled you cannot resist him you are scared of him you're always looking for what the enemy is doing you know but once your identity is secure in god god takes care of those things the battle belongs to him and you just remain under his shadow under the shadow of the almighty that is his, that is our refuge and our 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 safety net thank you thank you linton I can't wait to hear more what God is going to do in the coming days. So the next person we have with us is Martha. Actually, it might be supposed to be Martha Rayma, right? Not Martha Rayna. I think there's a mistake in the how the name was written. Um, so Martha is also part of the same group in Belize, and uh, she's into all wonderful things, natural health care and. uh we can't wait to hear from her so everybody gets 20 minutes okay please take note of the take note of the time please all right she's uh, she marta is right here so she's here from here okay so that yeah, one of, well, let's welcome marta marta the mic is yours oh wow she's going to cook breakfast for us yes. Say something, Martha, and make sure I can hear you. Can you hear me, right? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. I don't really know exactly where to start because there's so many things in <laughs> my heart that... <laughs> um, but during the course of this week, I was thinking a lot about what is the true passion inside of me? Um, there is a lot of things that i can do um, <laughs> and uh growing up uh i was taught of course taught i have the oldest in the family <laughs> and so i helping
Linton, it's getting cut off. The voice, the audio. What about now? We can hear you, but we can't hear her. Say something, Martha. Can you yes. hear me? Now yes. we can hear you. Okay. So, so, all right. So, because of that, this thought came to me and said, you know what? And I was actually also part of And we I think it's breaking up. I think it's breaking up. Have you signed in from two different devices, Lyndon? Or just one? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I think the Wi-Fi is the wi Well, please do one thing. Please. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, but can hear you now but after a few seconds, it's a break. Seconds. Can you can you get your technology right? I'm right. gonna ask the next person to share with us. So we don't have to. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. All right. So let me do this part. So there's different things that I wanted to share, but one of them was like, you know what? Because one of the things I've done. Yeah, it's not working. It works when you say that something very close to the mic or the camera, but then it goes away. Okay, so Martin, Martin and Jillian, they are our next speaker for today. Thank you so much. And everybody knows Martin and Jillian, they have been part of our team from the beginning, prayer team leading us, leading the prayer team and also leading the kingdom family group, which I'm so grateful for what God is doing through you guys. Because I remember when I met Martin in one of the meetings, you at least a year ago oh my god where he came out of what he came out of and what god is doing now in your life and through your life i am so grateful you are a living testimony so thank you martin and Jillian, for all the sacrifice for all the partnership and allowing you allowing god to use you actually so thank you share with us please it's yours Everybody, let's welcome Martin and Julian from Jamaica. Yeah, you can share the screen. Yes. Good morning again, everyone. Well, good day, everyone. All right. Um, where do we start? Uh, well, let me start where Abram started. Abram said when he met, when he met us, and when he met me and, and heard me talk for the first time, the the, the turmoil and the confusion and the many stuff. But I tell you, when you met me, when you heard that, Abraham, you met a very cleaned up, a very refined Martin. And um, just to show you how, I don't know, how ravaged we were by, by life, by, by religion, by, by, just, by just what exists. But yeah, if, uh, of course, uh, my wife and I, Jillian Ellis and Martin Ellis, and we're going to run you guys through just a quick, <coughs> sorry, just a quick um, video 
of, of not a video, just pictures of um, slides of the journey and different ones of us at different points will talk and uh, we will see how quick we can get this film. Yeah, so let me just say though, I, when I was born, I remember my mother, one of the stories my mother told me that I spent the first year in the hospital and I was so sick that every morning she had at the time two of us and every morning she would go to the hospital pretty much with the result that I probably wouldn't make it. And she says after around six months, around nine months, um, I started coming around. They had to take some things out of my brain or whatever, whatever. But I was extremely sick. And that means, uh, one of the things thing I think it means that I didn't get a lot of basic nutrients from my mother in terms of breast milk and all of that. And um, I think that kind of affected me even as early as then. And um, life continued. And my parents got divorced pretty much as soon as they got married. They had four of us. And um, then they got divorced. And for the next how much years, we were between parents. So that, that, that provided uh, instability and, uh, and, and just the basic infrastructure of mess and chaos and, and, and thing. In a sense, and I listened to Lyndon's story, there are several similarities to it. But yeah, but what happened at age 15, I, I got saved because grew up in the streets of, or on the streets sort of in Spanish town in Jamaica. And um, life was rough, life was hard, and I had to survive, had to survive, but thank God. So all of that happened and then God saved. And, and I always tell people, I think life began for me when I got saved at 15 and everything changed. I was, I was one way at one point and then something happened and then I changed. I can't explain it. And, I, and I'm still trying to even come to terms with it, but it happened. And God pretty much got a hold of me. All right, so pretty much that's the, that's the general ethos of me. I'm not sure if my wife would want to go into any little general things about her and before we, before we meet and all of that. Hi everyone. So you see, this is one of our differences. I, I like, you see, oh, anyway. <laughs> uh, so, as you know, I'm Jillian. And uh, I, I got saved. Um, well, I, my process is very different from Martin's. I, and the growing up is different from Martin's, of course. And I think all of that, you know, God works out all of that to, to get to where we're going. Um, I grew up, my closest, I think my closest, um, I was closest to animals. And so thus my profession. And, uh, and uh, I, I was very, very um in need of love i believe so i i so so thus even the, the animals and human bond um situation as well and so my my uh my interaction with humans was not as strong as um uh, as it could have been and so so we were, were very different because martin is more um was more more friendly with people and such and i wasn't that wasn't my situation. Um, but anyway, I wanted to, us to start with the marriage. And so can we? All right, so we start with the marriage though, pretty much. So go on. All right, so this is pretty much um, us getting married. I was 29, um, a young 29 man. Martin. 
um june 2022 we got married oh, and yes. so this is this year coming will be 20, 20 years so this is just we don't yeah have okay. mm -hmm. yeah so and um oh wrong wrong device and so continue. so okay so we got married and then um 10 years after yeah. we children came in the picture god has blessed us through the um process of adoption with two two sons um this is the first one up there uh smiling jordan uh that's him and then the baby here is um nathan and um yeah so that begun the family yeah so and and you know we didn't benefit from i don't know how many people benefit from parenting classes and so we were like, oh, you know, we should have children. And so here, let us go get some children since we're not having them naturally. You know, God has provided other movies. All right. So we went and we got, you know, we really God believe it was God it. because yes. um, how we got these children. And the thing about another thing we want to bring up as well, we have two sons. And the reason why we have two sons is partly because of people didn't want sons. Yeah, they didn't want boys. They didn't want boys. Didn't want boys. <clears throat> so, so here are our beloved boys. So yes. moving on. Fun ta da da. <laughs> <laughs> COVID. Yeah. So this is a big jump to yes. COVID. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. because uh, over over the time we were at different uh, ministries mm -hmm. and you know even how we met uh, we were from different um um ministry groups. ministry groups if you want to call it that mm -hmm. and um then we were together and and so with covid though uh there was a lot of um i was there pushing pushing you know trying to be the religious one continue on every sunday be i'm there you know teaching sunday school um being there and such martin coming to church and sleeping uh, and so it was not so good for me uh, that, but <coughs> there was a wake up um, with uh, COVID. Be well, before what happened in in the group is that you know Martin would always say, "Yeah, let's meet together. Let's you know," and we invite people for dinner after church and so forth. And you know, let's you know, as parents, let's talk about parenting things. And mm -hmm. oh, you know, nobody was really taking him on. Um, and so it, it was, you know, we are pushing this and we're not getting anywhere with that. And so that, you know, the heart is there, um, a burden on our heart, but it wasn't there with them. And um, it, it was more uh, global ministry, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so what's happening here, you know, what's happening here where we are. So that wasn't working out. All right. And also <coughs> want to mention, because what was extremely frustrating for me what I couldn't come to terms with is most of what was being preached from the pulpit, I could not identify. There was no connection with what was being preached and what I was living, what I was experiencing. I saw at the time had a lot of young families and people was having children, of course. We, of course, just learning how to manage and, and all, all, all the different nuances that coming with raising young children. And when you talk to other families, they'll tell you, yes, they're having their little issues too. But nobody was telling me or helping me to I understand and to identify how can we come together to put some basic things in place to see how we can better parent, how we can better manage and pretty much create something. I've said several times, I've mentioned to them, guys, what can we do? And Again, nobody paid me any mind and all of that. So yeah. that was, I think that was the early birthing and, and the desire of this whole thing with family. So we continue on. Yeah, there's COVID. And, and then in March. Okay, so COVID came. And we started meeting online. We started meeting online. And I think out of the frustration, the pain and everything, I believe God just one day get up and 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 so well well just say listen enough of this foolishness because you wanted this purpose to come forth and i felt and this is going through at the time too i, I remember god led us through a series where we read the family we have not reached there yet oh we don't reach there yet? 
But uh, yeah, so it, what happened? We were already singing together, together, but we weren't together. And so with, with going online, we were even more not together. And so these people um, who we love and, and such um, didn't seem to reciprocate the same. Uh, so we were learning how to, you know, it, it caused us to turn in one way to, to look, look, find God in, in, you know, in ourselves and between us. Mm -hmm. So that was, so we didn't have that, um, that crutch anymore. Yeah. And so in March, 2020, you know, we, we uh, had <laughs> and um, it was basically leave. And so that's what we did. Um, it was like we were squirt out of the, the sick fruit and and the four of us you know this is a picture of our first Sunday out. You know, we, we went basically to the seaside. Yeah. And we yeah. were we that's the first smiling picture you have on Martin there. And so, you know, we were that's that's us. And so so moving on um into the preparation stages and our transition to kingdom of God, we had many meetings that we were a part of mm -hmm. there's a conversation with anderson williams there the the we had with um sherbert and unica and owen uh, and rose and and linda and what we call the seven thousand others um because we were like we are the ones that you know nobody is thinking of we are there and you want to say something? yes and what this group really okay so after the group with anderson never end there are still they meet like once a week but then I felt that I really wanted to connect with these guys outside of that. So I, Sherbert had reached out to me and I said to him one day, can we meet on Sundays? And he said, no problem. So he and his wife with my wife and um, I with the children, we just started meeting. And um, we did this for a while. And then of course I mentioned it, I think I mentioned it to Rose and several persons start hearing about it, including I think Delta, um, yeah, Delta too. Yes, Delta yes. And um, it just we just started meeting, and pretty much it 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 went for for for, for a couple of weeks well, for a couple of weeks well, and we felt after a while I felt that that vehicle uh, we didn't have where 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 God was taking us. We didn't have all the the, the spiritual infrastructure and the support system. And I remember saying to Sherbert, because I found out by this time that Abraham was having these meetings online. And so I said to him, can you find out from Abraham? I don't even remember. Can you find out, <coughs> sorry, can you find out from Abraham if we can meet, uh, if we can join him? Because I didn't know the procedure or anything. I thought it was an exclusive little club, of course, where we're coming from to, um, everything is like a little club club. Yeah, so you have to make sure you ask and write letters. And yes. Make sure, you know, all is well yes. tidy. Yes, and you have to get your release from your general superintendent. And There's you, no you, such you, thing. No, know. but all of that. But um, so it, it said yes. And believe me, it, 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 it began. It began. But I think it's just significant to mention there is also a group with that's called Kingdom Family that we had met with uh, that includes Sherbert and Unique as well mm -hmm. and Owen and, and, oh. and Rose because um, this is a, also um, helped in the formation of was very, uh, yes. his Kingdom Family. Yes, very, very so, integral in that. So uh, so going on, you know, we have our family issues um, because, you know, our parenting is not the greatest <laughs> and, and, and we have, you know, we have, I don't know if we can say but we have probably a son that is a quite a he's, opportunity to learn he's good parenting. special a special one and um yeah. you have but then to... um there there are other things like we read um i read pilgrim's progress that book and it was like wow you know there is progression we need to move we keep need to move keep moving and you know there was a book that was read and then we watched the video we found online um, Miles Monroe messages we went through. There are messages out of Africa and some of the people that we listen out of Africa yeah. is like um, uh, Arome, Osei and, and so forth. And then there is also, because where we were, the diet, we had a uni diet of where we were coming from. So it's their music, their thing, their language, their that. So now we're, we're listening to, and it's not that we didn't listen to anybody else, but mm -hmm. no, you know, we're free. We don't even, 
listen to that anymore. And so, so, so we're seeking and we're seeking. And so there are other things that we know with different things that we have been through that help us in our, in our preparation. So here is the Ecclesia. And so in November, 2020, we started with Ecclesia and um, first, first time we're hearing like, oh yes, purpose, we find purpose, we need to find out all of that. When the course starts in January. So this is November and the course is starting in January. So, you know, we, Martin got on a couple, couple um, sessions late yeah, um, yes. through Sherbert. Yes, and, yes. you know, so I was out of that. But then I think it's March or April. I'm not sure. I started it in the, the next set. And then Martin was there again. And by June, you know, that June is, is significant. But talk about that later. And in, by, in September, I think it was again, we got through the course again. And then there we started, you know, Martin started on, on the, the seeking, entering and manifestation of the kingdom. And I, I, we went through also the, the um, discovering the, the purpose, call and gifts. And in the, in the Ecclesia, we went through that as well. With, and then also with Bridget um, coming through, talking about purpose and such. And we want to share a little bit more on that later. And, and of course, we, we just finished um, see, um, see seeing entering and manifestation the kingdom once again in mm -hmm. january mm -hmm. february so talking about the redemptive gifts because that's um that's what we we did um the questionnaires or motor what bridget had presented and so from that we see Mar martin scored highest in the exalter and then mercy then prophet and servants and then giver and ruler and then lastly teacher now for me no um it was first prophet and then and then um, servants but when it came to teacher was third um, for the first um, questionnaire but the second questionnaire was highest for teacher so so um, that's that and then mercy um, giver and then uh, ruler and exalter um, the lowest for me but there are other gifts that you know um, for instance Martin with your oh well one of the things that I I pretty much have done. Like Lyndon again, um, I'm a chef and didn't go to any formal quote unquote catering school. I remember the early days did a small community center thing, but that was it. But um, I think God certainly has placed this whole cooking thing inside of me. And that is what my, that is what has propelled me professionally. And that is what I've done for most of my life. I've gone far and wide. Um, uh, uh, Brother Hebram, you know this, but I actually met um, Miles Monroe and cooked for him. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, the day this, the, there's a scripture that says, your, your gift shall make room for you and bring you before kings. And I think that day that scripture fulfilled in my life. <laughs> but um, yes, so that has certainly been a major, major highlight in my journey. And um, so the whole, the whole cooking thing. So that certainly has been a very strong um gift and it's pretty much a part of the package yeah and and then for me you now it's the um drawings and that kind of creativity type thing you know the children when they would get their their you know assignment art assignment i was like oh yes let's do this <laughs> so that you know that was fun for me so <clears throat> not much avenue for it otherwise so i am looking forward so in this presentation the drawings you'll see because i didn't want anybody to copyright us um the drawings are what i did quickly so here um prayer now let's talk about prayer all right um this has been from day one extremely significant for me when i got saved um i think along with what came with my salvation experience i believe was the whole thing of prayer and intercession. And of course, I was not taught. I just knew that I wanted to pray. I have the desire and, and thing. And the little that I picked up, one of the meetings that I, well, at the time, I must say very quickly, I would um, go to every meeting that the church would have. Um, but my main, I think my favorite meeting was prayer meeting. Again, it was only mainly old people at that meeting. And um, that was it. And you just do the little that you know and what you hear and you, you, you think. But as I, as I develop, as I grow, as I 
pretty much started learning the word of God and started pressing into God, I, I, more and more it was very apparent that it was one of the things that God had placed on me. And I, let's say, naturally do. Never always heard people always say, oh, you are an intercessor and you are this and, and whatever, whatever. And um, I really felt that it's something that God certainly really has been training. And now I would say, even in this new dispensation of, of life and of journey, I really wanna speak very, very, very passionate because I think, mm -hmm. passionately, because I think that we, as the, as the body of Christ, and even in this, I would say, new ecclesia that God has risen up and is rising up, I, I really want to see more, of course, the Ramada asked me, as you said, and you all know, to, to be leading the, the prayer meeting. And I really believe that we are still being redefined and we're still learning. And yeah. um, we have quite a few more people coming on now. But again, I, I, I'm imploring us people because I think that has been a major major deficiency that has dogged the body of Christ for, for centuries. And, and, and we would have known these things. And we must, we must find the, the whatever. And I know everybody will not <clears throat> naturally have this, but I think that even if you don't naturally have it, but you have to understand that one of the things that you must live and breathe and everything else, along with whatever gifts and abilities that God has given you naturally. I believe prayer and seeking him, the scriptures are filled with different things that speaking about seeking him and seeking him first. And, 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 and uh, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And, I mean, the word of God is just overflowing with different pointers and specific things on prayer and we seeking and I really want to make the point that saints of God we must get beyond here because that's the only weapon or the main weapon I believe that we have that the enemy cannot find any sort of of course when we're praying with with, with wisdom and with the, being led of the spirit mm -hmm. and, and that is where I really want to, us to, to touch yeah all right, so yes, we're in many different prayer groups and um, different levels of prayer, and we're you know seeking God to learn His kingdom way. Um, even as the disciples had to be taught, we think that there's teaching that needs to go on for prayer. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so um, next point, family. Okay, I'll start off. Let's just um, be so, time. Our time is up. Just be mindful of the time. Yes, we're, we're pretty much, this is the last slide and we'll just... This is not the last slide, but oh, we'll go quickly through it. So this is our, um, this is what God gave, uh, um, well, me for uh, the kingdom, for his kingdom family and um, different parts of it, you know, that represents the blood. Um, this is um, his kingdom family, which down below is heaven inspired sanctuaries. Then of course it is a kingdom family situation and that speaks back into the group that we're from. Um, there is the blood that is transforming us um, as it changes the color, change our, how we look, change our manifestation. Um, there is rippling out to, you know, out to others. There is, um, it, so this has, um, sorry for the truck. There's the, there's the droplet and there's also um, bubble um, technology going on here. So here is um, bubbles, there's, <clears throat> sorry, there's attraction. Um, so, so families will, you know, if you look at bub bubbles as families, bubbles will come in and be transformed. And this bubble actually should be red because this bubble is, is going to, um, there's co coalescing and then there's bubbling um, development and detachment as bubbles go forth to do um, what they're to do. Um, this is our, our mission um, vision statements um, because we, we it's, it's high that we are a sanctuary for, for God's people. Uh, and for families to be built up as they go through. And so, you know, in, you know from, from Genesis 1, um, 26, that, that God made us to, to take, to have dominion. And I want you to remember this, this kind of drawing here. Um, yes, it's a depicting, in, well, you know, the garden, 
um, with Adam and Eve, but um, that you should uh, look at look at um, oops, look at this card here um, because you will see it later on as in this. You know, God has provided, even as in the, in the womb of the woman, there is this watery woman. We spoke a little of on, on the, our, in Thing the seminar. Um, that's that what God has provided for us as he shields us and, 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 and develops us. us and protects us. Mm -hmm. um, such a he did in the garden as well. And, and you know, that we, we are to, to, um, to train. And the training is so important for all of us as humans to, to, to grow up. And, and um, so here, you know, unless the Lord builds a house, um, they that labor, labor in vain. And that, you know, we are to from one, to, it's, it's a generation to an annex that we're looking towards. And so there are two streams in his kingdom, uh, his kingdom family. Um, there's an intimate family contact where we have fellowship and training and support, mm -hmm. but then there's the outreach with the seminars and the training. Mm -hmm. And so uh, rushing off, that's, that was our last. Slide. So we're still seeking God. Thank you. Seek and you shall find. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Martin and Jillian. You guys are, are a testimony yes. and thank you for what you shared. And all these chefs, you know, who cooks, I, I, I wish you guys live next to me somewhere here, you know, that you could. <laughs> Nobody will buy me a coffee yet. Oh my Lord, have mercy. You guys moved to Denver or somewhere here. <laughs> uh, thank you. I am going to form a kingdom family tribe today, Martin. So that is the that is the launch today for the kingdom family tribe. So you guys can lead it and take it to the next level, share everything. And also there are families that comes, you know, sometime need care and counseling and things like that. So we have to make room for that. I believe that is your assignment or find the place for them. So may the Lord continue to help you, guide you, strengthen you, do that. You know, I was looking at your wedding picture. Jillian looks so happy and excited and Martin is like, what did I get into? You know? <laughs> he was terrified. Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> he cried, you know, he cried. He He's loud crying. I was like, I was there like, what? I you know, kneeling beside him, and there was, <laughs> I was like, oh, well. you had to pray for him. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Hey, that was me, so don't worry. <laughs> well, thank God for what God has done. See, anybody has any questions or comments for them before I jump into? I hope Martha is ready with her technology there, Linton. Any questions, comments for yes, she is. Martin and Jillian? Ma, um, Abraham? Yes, Shernet. Martin, Martin did not cry. He bawled. He bawled, <laughs> he bawled, he bawled. <laughs> but I really, I am so proud of them because I've watched them grow up and they have come a long way. Continue, Martin and Jillian. God is with you. And I have your back too. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Shanet. Amen. Anybody else before we move on? Nope. Well, Mark. Oh, yes. I see another hand. Owen Roberts. Brother Owen, please. Um, this is Owen on Rose. There is no way. I could make this opportunity pass without picking up <laughs> Martin and Gillian. I think they kind of smother some of the real hardcore testimonies. <laughs> they kind of put a little nice face on it, but they have come a long way. And we're extremely proud of them and to see what God is doing in their lives. Um, had it not been for our relationship between Martin and Martins and Jilly and Rose and I, we would have still been stuck in the vortex of religion and religiosity. And thank God for their obedience. And they found something that they were excited about and they could not keep it to themselves and shared it with us. 
hence why we are part of the Ecclesia right now and is enjoying every moment of it. Big up Martin and Jilly. Thank you, thank you, Owen. Oh my goodness, you guys are a blessing. And Rose, your comments and encouragement, you know, it's, it's life-giving. Thank you so much. Okay, Martha, please go for us. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Well, you've gone again. What's happening there with this microphone you have? I think you had to plug that thing a little more inside on the on the laptop. There you go. Say something, please. Nope. Nice. I think Lindy keeps speaking through that microphone only. Are you, are you hearing her now? I huh? can hear you now. But as soon as Martha starts speaking, it disappears. I don't know what's going on there. Well, you can hear me now. Yes. Hello. Yes, we can. It's working. Okay. All right. I was going to show you a little. Um, buffet type of thing. Um, usually on Sundays, I will cook. And so because it's directly at lunchtime, that these meetings fall for us. So, um, and it's been something that I have actually always enjoyed. I've always we used to do the restaurant thing that Lyndon mentioned earlier. Um, we used to do a lot of catering. And so um, it was always these things. I had all these fancy, like pretty dishes and <laughs> try to make the food pretty and all. And I was going to show you, but it seemed like that wasn't working. So I'll skip that. Um, so yes, Abraham, you're invited. You can come for lunch. I made enough food. I'll be right there. <laughs> <So> <laughs> and let me just tell you what I had made. I had made um, flour tortillas and I had done fajitas meat and refried beans and i did some coconut yogurt and i made these parfaits with um, mulberry um, sauce that i had made which i was from our tree at, from my mom's place anyways um <laughs> so anyway but um i um yes i grew up in a family of 10 i was the oldest and this week i have thought a lot about okay lord what is what is it that you're, what is it in my life? What is it that I need to share today? Um, uh, and I felt like God highlighted some things that I wasn't going to share, <laughs> but then I kind of said, okay, maybe I should after all. And so um, one of the things with me is that I got saved. Well, first of all, I grew up in a very traditional church, um, very religious. And so um, I actually got saved when I was, I think I was 18. Um, I had been in church all my life. I had been baptized in that church already and all that. But um, from a very young age, I think it was probably like 12 years old. I used to listen to this shortwave radio station that, that, um, they had these different programs and it was a station that was streaming from Ecuador. <laughs> and so at a young age, I always had this passion that I wanted God more than anything else. And um, eventually, but I always struggled and I was wondering, am I even saved? Am I, you know, because religion where I was at did not teach you really about salvation. And so at the age of 18, I got saved. Um, I came across somebody that actually led me in a prayer and led me to the Lord. 
And um, ever since then, I could not function in that place anymore. Well, I couldn't function in that church before either, but that was really a big turning point. And, um, and I've always been somebody that wanted to leave an impact. Um, one of my desires has always been to be able to make a difference in young, in children and to make a difference in young people. And um, so my life has pretty much consisted a lot of always helping others. <laughs> um, even the school, the natural healing school that I took, it was always a heart of, I want to be able to help others. And um, so in the midst of all that, this morning, um, I came to the conclusion that, you know, I could share about all the natural health or whatever and that passion that I have there. But then God took me back to what is what was before that. <laughs> what was the passion inside of my heart before that? And I sometimes wondered, OK, God, it doesn't seem like these things are happening. Like, yes, I have this desire. I would sometimes... Every once in a while, maybe see somebody and I would see, okay, how they're able to um, impact somebody else's life or, or even young people or children and stuff like that. And, and I used to really admire people that do foster care or even adopt, but it always seemed like that was not really um, part of my life, <laughs> but it was always something that was deep inside of my heart. And so... Um, The last few years, well, I have a sister that passed away four years ago, and she had a little son, and he was four at the time. And so I've had a lot of opportunity to, even though I'm his aunt, <laughs> but he would often come to me and he would just grab me and say, Mama, Mama. And I've taken that very seriously because, and then also there's another situation again in my family where um, I still have a big part or a big role that I play in one of my nieces' lives who is now, she's going to be 11 soon. Um, and to me, that is always the most important thing. I, how can I instill things about God in them? I've always thought that, you know what, if you can teach a child about God and teach them how to live, that is the most important thing you could ever do um, to get, have them to know God, not just know religion the way I grew up, but actually know God. And um, so uh, in a sense, I have a couple of children that really look up to me um, and I'm able, I'm, I'm able to spend time with them. Um, cooking for me plays a big part in that because I've always thought that, you know, good, wholesome, home cooked food is really important to give to a child. Don't just give them a little bag of chips or whatever. No, something that you can make yourself and you know exactly what's in there. And so um, that is kind of me. And then there's also another child. Well, actually, I so <laughs> one of the things that I do is I pick up my niece from school every day. Um, and then also um, I have the opportunity to also spend or also um, pick up uh, Lyndon's kids from school because they go to the same school. And one of the things that's really meaningful to me is um, there's been instances where um, his youngest son, he's eight, he's the same age as my nephew who calls me mama. Um, they're both eight. And um, I end up being able to have the most meaningful conversations with these young kids. Um, we would talk about angels and we would talk about different things. We'll talk about the Holy Spirit. We'll talk about God. We'll talk about, um, I mean, sometimes we even go over things like, who am I? Who am I in Christ? Um, you know, like, I am a son of God and stuff like that. And those are the things that I find really, um, really, really fulfilling um, to be able to do that, to be able to, to leave like a mark in their life. Um, another thing that I was thinking about and I wasn't sure how I was going to do it um, 
in my personal times, I still sometimes do this, even though I don't remember all the different steps that we had, but some of the songs, like for instance, the song that I shared the other day is a song that still touches my heart a lot. Um, it was a song that we used to dance to and I was thinking to myself, if only I could remember the steps, then I would have done the, then I would have danced to that song today. But I couldn't remember because it's too many years ago. I only meant, remember a few of the steps that we did. Um, but worship has also been something that I've always been very passionate, felt passionate about. Um, and so, yes, I have the training in natural health. And, but for me, it all ties together. It, it's something that, that I take whatever I know. Um, like, for instance, I will make little syrups and stuff like that that help for cough and, and different things. And for me, it's always, I'm always so, feel so blessed when I know that something that I was able to create with my hands or something that I was able to grow myself. Um, and I'm able to use that and actually help um, make a difference when somebody is not feeling well and stuff like that. And so, um, I think that is more or less it, except that I thought I was gonna sing part of a song today. Um, and I'll close off with that. So uh, let me just sing a song and then I'm done. So I will give you all my worship. I will give you are my praise you alone i long to worship you alone are worthy of my praise and i will give you all my worship I will give you all my praise. You alone, I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Martha. Thank you so much. Yeah, somebody made a comment, you know, like every week, if you noticed, this is something supernatural. There is a, there's a supernatural theme that happens in every week, you know, why people and what people share. Last week was, um, I think it was kingdom healthcare. One week was education. And this week is kingdom cooking <laughs> food become the, the theme even though other things were important family and teaching and everything is there there's a there's a supernatural thread that goes every week that is highlighted so thank god for what he's doing thank you martha for all the many gifts that god has blessed us you know one of the problems with christians is we have so many gifts we don't know which one to focus so we become the jack of all trade and master of none. So we need to master something. We need to focus on one thing for five years. That is the key, guys. That's what I teach on discovering purpose, calling, and gifts. One thing, like Paul said, this one thing I do, not 200 things, 10 different things for 40 years. Then after the end of 40 years, like we are, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> Don't let that happen to you to anybody. I'm not just talking about Martha here, but many of us have so many gifts, talents, and anointing and grace God has put us. But sometimes we don't know which one to focus on which season, like David did. He focused on music in one season of his life. He focused on slingshot in another season of his life. He didn't carry that throughout his life. He didn't build a career on how to train other people on how to shoot slings or he didn't build a career on music his ultimate destiny was to be the greatest king of israel but every other gift played a role 
in where he needs to get in his life. So please discern, please understand what is the gift and the calling that God wants to focus you on this season. He never wants you to focus on five different things. That's not the way kingdom work. That's not the way how God works. One thing I do and do it well and, and God will prosper you. So anybody has any comments, questions for Martha? I know we are a little bit out of time here, but we have two more people to go. Thank you for your patience. Next week, we have a guest speaker, Dr. John from Haiti. He's an anointed man of God, my dear friend, my brother actually in the kingdom, but the same mother. I will tell you the story next week. <laughs> And the mother is here on our on our program here, so so please don't miss it. Next week he'll be with us. He's, he leads one of the largest ministries in Haiti. That's where I went a few months ago with him to minister to the pastors and all the earthquake with victims and people there. So he'll be with us next week. And also, uh, we are focusing with all the other things that is happening now. Uh, we are focusing Nepal. We need $3,500, my brother Amit, I think he's here. He sent me the list of things we need. Every month we are focusing on one country, one project um, somewhere out in the world. So please don't forget to send your offering, your tithe or your fifth or your 20th or whatever the Holy Spirit puts in your heart to donate, to give to the ministry. Please don't. I am not asking you. I haven't asked you. Maybe some of you are not giving, but don't be slack in your giving. Please don't put that behind because we need it. And as a ministry, we need it actually. So you don't have to buy me lunch. You don't have to buy me coffee. <laughs> Send the offering to the ministry and I will travel. I'm traveling next week. I'm going to Dubai. I will be in India. Uh, so keep me in your prayers. And please don't forget to send your offerings, donations, whatever the Holy Spirit puts in you. If, you, if, I, if I tell you my budget, you will be shocked, but I am not sharing that uh, for all these trips. So, and also Nepal, that's, that's outside of the normal giving, outside of the usual giving, the special project we do every month. So March is going to be Nepal. I was supposed to focus on February. We got delayed with Philippines and other projects we are doing. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your support and your prayers. So anybody has any questions, comments for Martha? I, I do have a comment. Yes. And, uh, um, and just to, to um, settle, if you wish, something about Martha. She has so many gifts. <clears throat> but I think that everything I've been hearing um, what Martin has said, what Jillian has said, you know, everything is being pulled together. And I do covet their abilities and their, and their experiences for the kingdom, for the education, family, department, because I really can see where Martha not only can, can teach the next generation to, um, to sing and to cook, but uh, she can bring them into worship, a huge part of the education curriculum. And what we strongly believe is that if when we um, build children who love worship, then that is part of their kingdom development and education. So worship is a strong part and it is not separate from say development of the curriculum for the next generation. Um, Jillian spoke lightly, but she, but often about her, her love for animals and that's her profession. And, and when she said it, when you said it today, Jillian, I, I really thought that um, children, part of the curriculum, straight talk, can be how to, how to um, dominate, how to obey um, the call of God in our lives, to have dominion over the animals, how to love and care for them and how to for them, for those animals to provide what we need and so on. So um, I think the, her, her profession can also be made part of the kingdom conversations about how to interpret this and to bring it forth as part of um, education. So in all of what I've been hearing, 
what God is pulling together, and I'm hearing it throughout the uh, meeting today, is that um, we're going to raise children who are kings and queens and have dominion over what God has given to us through every single thing that has been said so far. I, again, I want to refer to, um, to Lyndon as he stands tall and strong and, and shows the next generation you know, how to dominate as kings uh, with a pastoral spirit, you know, and you said, um, Apostle, that um, David had a lot of skills, but he was moving towards kingship. And that's what it's all about. We are moving all of our next generation towards kingship and what it is to have dominion over the world that God has given to us. And, and I am going to repeat something I've said twice, which is there's a generation lateral to people of our own age who are still floundering, they need to be brought into this. What Martin and Jillian have come into, I know something of their history and I know that they need to minister laterally as well as to their own sons that they have um, fostered and, and call them mom and dad to, to bring them into, into such a uh, confidence. Um, Martin and Jillian have a lot to share with us, something about how to, how to think globally and internationally, you know? So there's a lot of intermixing and intersharing and, and God has neatly, cleverly put all of these people under this ministry for which I give God a lot of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pat, for sharing that. Appreciate you. Um, well, the next person we have is Michael Smith all the way from my favorite country on the planet Earth, which is South Africa. <laughs> Michael, are you here, my brother? I know it is late there in South Africa, but... I am here, yes. Here. So thank you. Good evening. Share with us what God is, the kingdom that God has put in you, please. And share okay. with us Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening, those, and good day. Uh, those who don't know me, I'm Michael from South Africa. Uh, I am married 21 years. Uh, my wife is a teacher. I have three boys. One is working, one is on university, and one is his last year at school. Uh, my journey, I'm just going to give a, a, see a quick background of my journey. I am 48 years old. I have never seen my father. I grew up without a father. I grew up with a step a stepdad. Uh, he died when I was 16 years old. And uh, my whole life, uh, I can remember uh, my mother always took me to church. Uh, so she was basically the one that uh, took care of me and also my grandparents. Uh, when I uh, finished school, um, I started working on the farm that we loved. And then I moved to another farm at the age of 22, 23, where I became a qualified diesel mechanic. And uh, working there 13 years, I became the manager of the workshop, having 10 people under me. I worked for a year as the manager of the workshop. Then I got another job. Uh, and starting at that job, it was amazing that when I stepped in, I saw that, that this job is not going to last long because the company is overspending its finances. And I think after two years, I was retrenched. Uh, and then that was about 10, 11 years ago. And for the last 10 years, 11 years, I did contract works. So I started working. Uh, firstly, I started with my own business. I took photos and videos uh, of weddings and parties just to have an income. Uh, later then I started joining contract jobs at the, I, the IEC, the Independent Electoral Commission, where we run or manage all the uh, elections of the country. Uh, so we have elections every uh, two and a half years. So I did, the, I think, six elections. Uh, then I also worked at uh, Statistics South Africa, which is uh, the census. We are busy now with uh, census. So I worked with them. And then last year, uh, when it was also a, another election, our local government election, uh, the, the opposition party in our local government uh, 
they asked me to join them to be the administrative uh, person in the election. So I joined them and I learned a lot about elections and how it actually functions and operates. Uh, and now I am also busy with, uh, again, at census, like I said, we have now the elections. Uh, my other side of life, like I said, uh, as I can remember, my mother took me to every church that we are going. We went to different churches. And as I grew up, I was uh, always under some mentoring, under somebody that took care of me, a man that took care of me, that mentored me. And then uh, my life uh, started shifting and have a great change in 2012. Uh, when my sister uh, uh, took her own life uh, about something. And I can remember that Sunday I took her to the hospital and they said everything is fine. That's the year on the Monday morning that she passed away. And for that whole Monday, we spent at the hospital waiting for the forensics to come and pick up a body. And we came late the afternoon home and we were exhausted. And that night uh, coming home, I could have cried for the first time because I'm the eldest brother also in the family. So I needed to be strong that day. And after crying for a uh, few minutes and, and all the emotions out, I clearly heard the Lord told me that the hurt that you are feeling now is the same hurt that many families and parents are feeling. And I want you to help them. And from that moment, I thought that I must now look for people who want to do suicide. Uh, but very fast, I see that is not the way God wants me to do. And then I, we started to uh, have another church because we ran a church as a young couple, me and my wife in our 30s. Uh, we have about 40 people under us. Uh, and we did everything from the finances to the cleaning, the church building. I was a taxi driver for the church. Every Sunday, I wake up at six o'clock in the morning, cleaning the church, go and fetch the people with a taxi in the afternoon, taking them home. Every Sunday, I come about, uh, came about four o'clock in the afternoon at home. Then we have the services during the week. And in 2012, when, my, when that came with my sister, then uh, there became a shift where we moved a little bit away to start our own ministry. And then the only way I had starting ministry in my head was how I saw guys previously did it. And one day I organized a, a church meeting and coming there, there was no people. And I heard the Lord told me that I didn't give you, I didn't told you to start a, a, a ministry. I'd given you a vision. And again, I didn't understand what was happening or what the Lord is actually saying to me. And then COVID came. And I remember in uh, 2012, August, uh, sorry, 20, uh, 2020, August, I asked the Lord uh, who I am, what am I, why did you send me in the earth, what is my purpose? Uh, because I was very frustrated at this time of things not going wow, I think it should go. And then in that week, uh, uh, Richard from, from Kenya, he was uh, Pastor Charles of PO, he invited me to the same gathering that uh, Julian and, and her husband was also on where Anderson Williams talked every Monday we gathered. And from there, I met out of you, Abram, and from there, the Ecclesia and I joined it on a Sunday evening. Uh, I have also went through the three uh, uh, courses uh, of the Ecclesia. And when I've done this, the last one was very hard to do because I needed to stand up at half past one in the morning because the classes uh, started at two o'clock. But when I finished that, uh, then, then the Lord became uh, starting to bring everything together. Uh, uh, and it was for me a very unbelievable to finish the three courses. Then the light is actually shining. And then the Lord started to speak about family also to me. And he started to open up what is family, what is kingdom family, what is the true blueprint. And, and, and what the father showed me is that uh, whatever we do, family is the foundation. If whatever we build doesn't have the family foundation or the family blueprint, uh, it won't last. 
Uh, so we opened a lot of things about family, how family should function and operate. Uh, and after from COVID started, uh, we closed down our church and we actually started this morning and, and we started with family gathering uh, in our house again, uh, started with family, how to build families. Uh, my wife also has something to work with women and with children and on her. She has already written two or three curriculums that she is going to do with children. Uh, outside of, of, of our school education, but also in an educational way based on the kingdom. Uh, so we are looking forward to that. Uh, so I know now that, uh, let me say in the spiritual side, it is all about family. And specifically also it starts with men. Uh, and the Lord showed me how uh, most of, of most of the problems in a marriage is where the order is not right, where it is God the Father, then the man, then the, the wife, uh, where the wife is actually uh, uh, sitting in the place of the, of, the, of the husband, which means that because there's this order, there's no vision in that house because God cannot speak to the house because it doesn't speak in a place of this order. So the first thing is to restore men to their original order so that God can speak into that house. So uh, for me, that is also a strong uh, point to, to, to look at and, and where I'm busy writing certain things and bringing certain understandings in that area. Uh, what the other side, uh, the work side, uh, uh, I don't know really where the Lord is calling me to, to that specific area of it is politics or what it is. So I'm, I'm still looking for that side, but like I said, in the spiritual side, it is building families and that is where we are starting. Uh, and uh, that is the way forward for us. So thank you very much for this opportunity for sharing. Thank you that for what you have all the sacrifices put in to bring us to a certain understanding uh, to, um, and for me, the greatest highlight in this all was to find my purpose. That was the greatest peace and the greatest joy in my life. There's nothing else that, that can uh, uh, change uh, the way I feel because I know my purpose. I found the Father also, my Heavenly Father, because my desire all these years was actually to, to hear the voice of my Father. So I never heard. Uh, the voice from a father saying you did good um, or whatever in that sense so that was missing but finding my true heavenly father gave me a lot of peace uh, and so uh, like I said uh, uh, my, my, my mind is clear of the way forward of my future the vision what I need to do what I uh, must do uh, so yes uh, this is my story in a nutshell uh, thank you very much amen Wow, thank you, Michael. Oh my goodness. Sorry to hear all the sad experiences you had to go through, but God has brought you out of your captivity into his marvelous light. You know what God said concerning you? You are his beloved son and he is well pleased with you. So what I sense, you know, there's like a calm spirit about you that you were going to be an instrument to minister to many men to heal their heart, like Jerry shared last week. I don't know if you were here last week. So please send me your WhatsApp number or send me a, a message on WhatsApp. I want to add you to the family tribe. So please send me a quick message or something. I think you are not part of the group, but I need your individual number to add it to the family tribe. So please do that. I would appreciate it. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for what you're doing, what God is doing. Thank you for allowing God to do through you. I know it wasn't easy. Many walls, many healings, many process that you had to go through. But it is the beginning of something new in your life and in your family and through you and your assignment in God's kingdom. So I'm grateful. So, so you're God's beloved son. And we bless you. We honor you. And we are grateful for what God is doing and put in you in Jesus' name. Anybody else have any questions or comments for Michael? Simone, I see your hand. Quickly, whatever you want to share. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, 
you've got such a uh, meek and humble spirit and it's lovely in God's eyes. And um, the other thing was, yeah, thank you for being so honest and sharing your heart publicly. That's really takes God's to do that. Yes, thank you very much. Anybody else? No? Okay, thank you. We'll move on. We have one more person. Thank you for your patience. Minty Kim, all the way from Washington. Very few times we see her, but she's a lioness for God's kingdom. Minty, are you here? Yes, here? I'm here. There she Hello, is. Can, I, can you hear me? Okay, so, one second. Thank God for her life. And oh, sorry, one second. With the many gifts and talents. So we have been waiting to hear from you, Minty. Thank you so much for taking your time to be with us today. So Mike is yours. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm so not prepared. I am all over the place, but um, I want to keep it short and simple. Um, just want to share that what I think my um, calling for this season is. Um, so um, many of you already share that family, um, you guys are talking about the family and I think I am well um, standing on that um, place of family mountain. Um, I'm a full-time stay at home mom and I have two children. Um, I'm always busy, I'm always on the go. Um, I don't really have much time for myself in terms of doing things that I enjoy to do. Um, I have gifts in art and photography and graphic design, but I don't have the time to really um, develop my skill and do the things that I like to do because I'm busy at home. And I know that God has put me in this place where I need to focus in my family more because my husband is not in the kingdom, kingdom mindset. And I, uh, I am the only person that is saved in my family. So I believe that God has put me in this season to um, just um, minister to my family and just to enjoy this time being with them and um, doing all I can. And another thing that I believe that I, um, I am in the season of preparation. Um, I'm not sure if this is fully from the Lord, but I just sense that in this season that um, as wives and as husbands, we need to be prepared that um, whatever's coming, that we need to be prepared. We need to know um, what to do. And God has given me words to be prepared for um, this year that things are happening. And I need to start taking money out of the bank, not so much money in the bank, but just take, not just don't, don't store too much money in the bank and take money out, some money out of the bank and store up some food and, um, invest some money in um, silver, silver and gold and cryptocurrency. And um, I believe God has put me in a position where I just have to be prepared, like, like the day of Joseph, that you have to be prepared and, and, and store up for the, for the family and for the future. So um, that's where I am right now. Um, for a brief history that I am Korean and I was raised in um, and well, I was born and raised in China, and I moved here into the United, United States when I was 15. So I've been here over 20 years now. And um, I first came to know um, Kingdom, uh, um, the Abraham's ministry through Teddy. She was one that um, told me about um, take the course of the uh, Lost Kingdom when it was uh, COVID-19 season that when I stopped going to church, um, I just felt like going to church, I, my spiritually, I'm not learning anything. Like there's something that's missing and I don't feel like I'm growing anywhere. It's, I'm learning the same thing over and over and I needed something more. So when I learned about um, what Abraham's doing and finding your gift and purpose, and it just really like lightened, lightened me up. And I just feel that, oh, there's something that I can, I can learn about. So I started um, taking the courses in 2020. And um, I was also on part of the Ecclesia, but I just never show my face because I'm always on the go. And I just listen to everybody's testimonies. And I really enjoy being here, seeing everybody comes from all over the world. And it just 
it's just really special, special place to be. So um, in terms of learning and where I want to go, I still have a vision of um, doing art and business in the future. But in this season of my life, I just believe that I need to mainly focus in my family. And that's where God has put me. So, so that's my testimony. Wow. Thank you, Minty. I know you have some creative gifts in you. Please tell us what are the creative gifts God has put in you? Um, so I, gra I graduated from graphic design, um, well, 10 years ago or 20, I mean, 12 years ago. And I never really used my skill because I was, a, um, I became a single mother after that time and I had to survive and, and work. So I didn't really use my gift. But after that, I was getting another job as a photographer and I taught myself um, how to take pictures. And um, it just, it just natural to me that um, how to do things and how to get clients and how to, uh, you know, like I was taking photos for weddings and uh, baby showers and portraits, senior photos. And it just, it just natural to me. It just came to me. Like, like I really enjoyed doing it. Um, I also like to um, paint. And I was interested in um, painting um, modern abstract, um, contemporary modern abstract, and in forms of almost like, um, how do I say it? At one point, I was thinking about doing prophetic art. I feel like that's where God has really showing me, but um, I never really developed my skill further in that direction. Um, so it just never took me anywhere. But um, recently, I really um, got fascinated with NFTs. And I even actually started some NFT art and posted on OpenSea. But even though there's, they weren't sailed, I mean, they were on sale, but I didn't sell anything yet. So it's just the open, I guess it's just a starting point where I'm actually learning new things. And that's what I'm all about. I like to learn new things. I don't want to stuck in a place where I am practicing religion and feel bad about myself and that, you know, and I can do this and I can make money. And I want to be able to um, be in a place where I can be used for. And I believe I can um, actually start a business sometime in the future where I can support myself and my family. And I can even see myself doing mission trips. I don't know. That's just a dream of me just a dream in the future. But for now, that's, um, I'm just going to keep it simple. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my goodness, graciousness. Cryptos. I encourage everyone to get into the cryptos. $10, $100, invest something into the cryptocurrency because that is the new gold rush. And we have a group for crypto investment group. We are starting a course for those who want to learn on how to invest on April 20th. So only you will see that notice in that group if you're part of Mindy. I would like you to be part of that group. Um, it's on WhatsApp. Maybe we can learn from you and you can NFT and NFT is the digital world where you put your arts and pictures and everything for sale. So I'm also learning all these things, but I would encourage you, you know, you have to do something because that's the future. Cryptos are here to stay. It will be here for as long as this earth is going to run. So, but it's, it's a whole different world. It's a digital currency. Okay. Just like the currency we use, cryptos are a digital currency that the uh, world is getting to know and use more and more. So we need to be on with it. So thank you, Mindy, for sharing. May the Lord can, and also I would like you to add you to the family tribe. That's where you started. You said, you know, that's where your heart is. So we'd like to see you part of that. So anybody has any questions, comments for Minty? I, I know Simone is always ready to jump in, but anybody else have any questions or comments for Minty? I, I have a question about like the, the ages of her children and is she actually homeschooling them or mm. uh, what does she mean when she says she's a stay-at-home mom thank you my daughter she's gonna turn 12 and my my son he's two he will be turning three but um i started stay at home um in 2018 um that's when i when i got laid off for my job 
and I, I started being at home, just taking care of my family. Um, my son was still young. My son was born in 2019. Um, so ever since I just stayed at home and taking care of my family. Mm -hmm. So you're 12 year old. Do you take care of her education like in a homeschool situation? Oh, no, no. She goes to a public school here in, the, um, in Washington State. Okay, thank you. Wonderful. Okay, Simone and um, Lori. I just wanted to say that because we are kings and priests, yeah, and some are more priest and more or more king. And what I see in you is you you're so strong in your natural authority, and it's so beautiful to to just say you are a natural born queen, yeah. So, and whatever you do, if you're in the family with your kids and you think you're not aware of anything, but you, you God just develop this even more, yeah? This uh, humbleness, what you need as a king as well, but, or a queen, and then in within that, that, that natural authority, it's beautiful to watch. Thank you. Hmm. Yes, go ahead, Lori. Oh, hi. Um, just rolling around in my head um, is possibly like creating some kind of a website or platform for the artists in this kingdom, um, not just individually, but collectively, so that they can, you know, put their art out there. And then if there's any, some type of selling that goes on with any of this, that we can take a percent and give it to the kingdom. I need a name. <laughs> And possibly then I can have your son get this going, if that's a good idea. We have a Kingdom Arts tribe, actually. I would like to add Mindy to that tribe also. Well, I mean, I'm, I wanna do an actual site for every, so people can see their art and possibly sell it for the kingdom. Yeah. No, not a good well, idea? No, good idea. Okay, that's a very good idea. Yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> no, to plan that you could be part of the Kingdom Arts Tribe and plan those things. That's the purpose of the WhatsApp group. I see. Just to brainstorm, to come up with ideas and execute it, whatever God has called you to do. Um, we can, can you all just maybe um, try to think of a good name for it? I've been rolling some things around in my head, but I could use some contributions for the name. Whatever people think, just think it over and maybe tell us next week. Yeah, or share it in the Kingdom Arts Tribe <laughs> or Ecclesia Group. Okay. Are you part of the Ecclesia Group, Mindy, the main WhatsApp group? Um, I don't have the WhatsApp, but um, don't have WhatsApp. I, I can get one. Can you please download? Okay. It's free. Thank you. Okay, we need you. Thank you. Thank you, Teddy, for inviting her. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for hanging in there. I know we took some extra time because if we don't do it all this, we won't finish it even this year because we have so many people with so many gifts calling and we had to identify them, form this tribe, form the nation and invite the world, establish God's kingdom on the earth. So thank you everyone for who shared it. We pray blessings, God's favor upon you. Let's pray and thank God for all the testimonies, gifts, and talents God has given to the kingdom people all across the globe, because this is a special group from different countries, different language. Oh my goodness, this is real kingdom. Father, we thank you for all that you have done today. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the callings. I thank you for focus. Thank you for clarity to come. What is the next step for each one of us, Father? where to focus, where to identify opportunities, open doors. I bless each one of them who shared today, Father, as an ecclesia. I thank you for using them to establish your kingdom, not any man's ministry, not any organization, but God's kingdom on the earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for what you're doing through the ecclesia. Lord Jesus, you said you will build the ecclesia. Please come and build your ecclesia as you want it as you designed it to be from your heart, 
from the beginning of time. We thank you, Lord, for each one of us. I bless them emotionally, spiritually, financially, relationship, health. They will have a glorious week this week. Joy of the Lord be their strength, Father. Cover them with your righteousness and peace. Everywhere they go, whatever they do, work, business, at home, people, friends, I thank you for your covering and your protection and your shelter. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. And everybody who said, amen and amen. God bless you. I will see you next week. We will share the people who are going to be sharing. I don't think Heather shared it yet. I didn't ask her. <laughs> but please share it in the Ecclesia group, Heather. So please do that. Thank you. God bless you. I will see you next week, Sunday. Have a glorious week, everyone. Bye-bye.